In this lesson, we're going to look at the vibes kind of sound that happens at bar nine. Now, when you look at the score, you're going to see that it's called synth on this. But what I've found throughout this is they've actually bundled in a few other kind of instruments on that same line. So be very careful with that. This part is just focusing on this first section here. So from bar nine all the way down to bar 16. Um, and then, then it's gonna start looping. As you can see from the diagram here, from my sections, I'm actually using the synth vibes from bar nine, and then I'm using a loop at bar 17, and then I'm using the final iteration of it at bar 57. So just be very careful of that. Remember your notes. So when we're looking at doing these, you've got to remember that there are five sharps within the key we're working in, which is, G sharp minor, okay? So just be very aware, the only notes that haven't been sharpened are B and E, okay? Everything else is sharp. So let's just have a quick look at this. For the most part, the score is absolutely accurate and we've just typed these notes in here and it's just really, really worked. So let's look at just setting up the instrument itself. The instrument that I've chose for this one is the ES2. And there's a really nice preset. So if we just hit the ES2 button and then we come over to here, there's a really nice preset called Analog Sort in it. And it's almost perfect. The only changes that we've we've had to do to this preset, and you may want to do this, you may want you may want to do something slightly different. It's, remember, it's completely up to you. So if we look at the instrument now, you'll notice that we're using this oscillator two on a sine wave rather than the oscillator one. We've also tuned it up by one cent. The next thing that we've done is we've just adjusted the the LFO one, and you'll notice that the LFO one is routed to this modulation wheel. So it's just changed the modulation ever so slightly. And then the envelope, finally, the sustain has just been taken right down just to give it a more clean sound. I'll leave these screenshots in the lesson as well so you can have a little look through these, these changes. Have a look at some of the other things that we've done is we've added our reverb. Now, what I've gone ahead of time and done is set up a reverb that I'm gonna to apply to pretty much all of my channels. I've done this on bus one, so if I click on bus one now, you'll see that I've got this space designer. The EQ is just this flat line here, so it's just the space designer that I'm looking at. And I've set it up to this hot plate. I have changed a few parameters, and I will share this screenshot so you can have a look at that as well. But it's just it's something that I like to do, and a lot of producers like to do, is apply the same reverb across all tracks. And what that helps the mix do is kind of gel together a bit more. One thing you will find if you don't apply reverb is everything will sound very, very separate. I've just applied this ever so slightly, so it's not a lot of reverb, it's just giving it a bit of a kick, and that's that's all that's doing. As for the panning on this track, when you're listening to the track, you, are, you should be listening to your left and your right ears just to see if there's any panning, and you should adjust the sound appropriately. I feel currently that this, this track is very much in the center, so I've left it that. I brought the volume down ever so slightly, and what we're aiming for with the volume is when we're looking at these master tracks, let me just bring it over to these master tracks so we can see it. So when we're looking at this output track, we're trying to make sure that everything stays below zero dB. And when I think about mixing, and this is just kind of a generic thing at the minute, because we haven't got very much happening, we're just kind of putting out our mix very broadly. But when I think about mixing, everything starts to come down before it goes up. And this means when we get to the mastering stage, or the proper mixing stage, we have headroom to play with. You should never move this volume throughout your mix. A lot of my students in the past have kind of cranked this up to get more volume out of it, and that's really bad practice. That should stay on zero dB at all times. And this just gives you a really good indication of where you're at with it. So leave that on zero dB, and if you need to mix things, start bringing the loudest items down first. So I think that brings me to everything I need to say about this. I'm gonna let you guys get this part in, but let me just play it to you so you can see what I've got so far. And I think you'll be quite impressed. I'm quite happy with this one. And once again, I will give you the copy of these, my notes here. Um, a lot of you probably are struggling with 
reading the bass clef and reading the treble clef. So I'll leave you these notes as a screenshot. It is just one loop, so I'm copying the same loop over. And remember, our piece finishes at bar, before bar 90, so you don't have to include the last one of these. 